welcome to our video tutorial for this infinity cat scarf the twisted version so hope you enjoy it please like share and subscribe and hope to catch you soon thanks bye <laughs> thanks melba good girl good girl Okay, so for this project you'll need some yarn. I've got this little bundle here that um, I actually found in a uh, charity store and I'm going to use it um, today for this project. I don't actually know what its um, contents are. It feels like a, it's definitely got some wool in it. Uh, maybe a wool cotton blend, something like that. Uh, not exactly sure, but it's around a three, three weight and it's nice and soft and I think it'll work up really nicely into this project so I'm using that today. A, you'll need a crochet hook that corresponds to your yarn. I'm using four millimeter for this yarn. You'll need some scissors, a darning needle to weave in your ends and you'll need a tape measure to measure the circumference of your cat's neck. Okay, so the stitches and techniques that you'll need to know to make this Twisted Infinity Scarf is how to slip knot onto your hook, how to create a chain, how to double crochet, how to slip stitch, and then how to weave in your ends. So it's super easy, works up really quickly, beginner friendly, and uh, let's get started. Okay, so to get started, slip knot onto your hook. And... From here you'll have to work out how long you need your foundation chain to be. So for, for me, I'm going to take the circumference of Melba's neck, which is around 24 centimetres. So you want that to be measured relatively snugly, but not too tight. Then you'll add between 10 and 15 centimetres onto that measurement. So it depends how you want it to fit, how you want the infinity scarf to fit. If you want a looser sort of slouchier look, then you would add, say, between 12 and 15 centimetres, something like that. If you want it to fit more tightly around the neck, then you would add around 10 centimetres. You may go even down to around 8 centimetres. It depends entirely on, on what you you know what sort of look that you want and what I would recommend that you do is well, after you've done the length of chain that you need is just quickly check it on on your cat okay so count your your chains as you make them and you'll need to make sure that once you get to the length that you need um, you'll have an even number okay so I've got one two three four five six I'm gonna keep chaining now for Melba I'm I like a you know a sort of slightly slouchy look I don't want it too loose I'm going to add around 12 centimeters 10 to 12 let's say to the circumference of her neck which is 24 centimeters so 24 centimeters let's say I'll add 11 that'll be around 30 cent 35 centimeters so you chain to the length that you want and uh, I'll see you after you've done that Okay, so I've got the length of chain that I uh, want there. So it's ended up to be 60 chains for the yarn and hook size that I'm using. So now um, we're going to join this chain in a loop. Okay, actually just to, to go back for a moment, just again, reminder that you need to have an even number of chains. Okay, so we're going to make a loop. So just make sure that your chain isn't twisted. And we're just going to slip stitch into that first chain to join okay now to start round one you're going to chain three and then we're going to so that's a, a double crochet plus a chain one so what we're going to do is skip this first stitch that you can see here and then we're going to work a double crochet into not into the front of the chain we're going to work it into the back of the chain okay that third loop in the chain so if you look at your chain you've got this front side which is with the V's and then you've got this back side so we're going to work into that back loop of the chain 
Now, that's not strictly um, necessary. I just like to do it because I feel like it, it makes my work look a little bit neater. But if you just want to work into the front of the chain, it's okay too. So you've done your first double crochet into that second stitch or second chain. Chain one, skip one, and then work your next double crochet into the second stitch along. So that's basically the pattern we're going to follow. So chain one, skip one, and then double crochet into the next chain over. So you continue on with round one. And when you reach the end of this round, I'll, I'll meet you there, but don't slip stitch to join. Don't join at this point, okay? So I'll meet you around the other side of this round. Okay, I'm just placing my last double crochet in this first round. And then, as I said, we're not going to slip stitch to join, okay? Normally in these, or, you know, Sometimes in these projects we would slip stitch to join. We're not going to do that here. We're actually going to start to create the twist. Okay. So what you'll do is you're going to twist that, that uh, edge towards you. So that's the front. We're going to twist it towards us. Okay. So we're going to start working along this, this bottom chain end. Okay. So you just you don't need to uh, chain here. So just start working in. We're going to, actually going to be working into the chain space. We're not working into the chain. We're actually working into the chain space. So start your double crochet. Your first double crochet in that first chain space. Okay, and then chain one, and then work into the next chain space. Chain one into the next chain space and then the next chain space. So chaining one and working into the next chain space. So continue all the way around on this round two doing that same pattern and I'll meet you at the end of this round. Okay so I'm just placing my last double crochet into that last chain space. Now you'll have, it looks like you might want to work into this chain space, but don't work into the one that's underneath the chain from the beginning of the row, okay? Just find the top of your chain, so that third chain, and slip stitch to join round two. Okay? So just to recap, we've worked along the top and the bottom of the foundation chain, which is in the center here, and we've got our, that's our tail end, we've got our twist, okay? So from here on out, chain three, and now we're going to be essentially working double rows. We're going to be working along the top and also around the bottom, and you'll see it's kind of the magic of this uh, of this pattern it's it's pretty cool so you'll if you follow I'll just take my hook out for a minute if you follow around the edge so keep following around the edge and you'll see that when you get back to the the end of your round the top is the or the beginning is down this end so you'll keep working all the way around that edge until you get back to the beginning. So you're essentially working double rows at this point. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. It's kind of it's kind of cool and magic. So since I've got that twist, let me just three feed my ball through. There we go. Okay. So you've chained three at the beginning of this row. So you're just going to work the same way. You're going to find the next chain space and work into that chain space. And chain one. And then the next chain space, chain one, and then the next chain space. So you're going to work along both edges, as I, as I showed you, until you come back around here, okay? So just keep working until you reach this point here, and I'll meet you after I've done mine. Okay, so I've worked my way all the way around, and now I'm at the beginning of this double round, chain one, and then I've got my 
last double crochet there and now I'm just going to slip stitch into the top of the chain. Okay so now here's where you will decide whether you want to keep going for another double round or if you want to finish here. So it will depend on the size of the yarn that you're using, the size of the hook. You might want to go a bit longer. Um, it also depends on the look that you're going for. So I'm actually going to go for one more round because I think this will look nice um, just slightly wider. So I'm going to chain my three and then I'm going to start my row, my round, exactly the same as I've been doing with the others. The chaining one and working into the chain space. So if you want to go for another um, another round, go ahead. If you wanted to finish there, um, then yeah, you, I mean, I'm going to show you how to finish off in this next, next part anyway. I'm going to continue around for one more round. Um, otherwise, basically, you'll just tie off um, where you were at and start to weave in your end. So you can skip forward to uh, doing that. Otherwise, I will meet you after I've finished one more round. So I'll catch you soon. Okay, so I've just placed my last double crochet in my final round there. Now, of course, you could keep going if you want an even wider scarf or if your, you know, your yarn is, is smaller and you want to keep going. Otherwise, you'll just slip stitch as you've done before and then yarn over, pull through leaving enough to weave in as a tail. And then you'll just take your darning needle and weave in your tail ends. So taking one end, thread your needle, and then I'm going to assume that you, you know how to do this, but just uh, working in your tail end, now what I like to do is go down the chain a little bit, or down the top of that row I should say, a little bit, and until I come to, and then just make that nice and neat, and then until I come to actually a double crochet and I, I tend to go down, down those stitches, come out and down there, so make it nice and secure. Just make sure you're not pulling too tight when you weave in your ends. And then I'll come along here. So whatever works for you just to secure your end. And of course you'll do it on both ends. Your starting end and your finishing end. So I'm going to go ahead and, and finish that off off camera. And I'll be right back. Okay, so I've woven in my tail ends and I've snipped off the excess. Oh, a bit of yellow fluff there. So there's your twisted infinity scarf. So you'll see that when it's worn, the back around the neck, or, you know, you can wear it however you want, but um, the back around the neck will be flat, and then the front has this, this twist in it. Okay. So well done on finishing your twisted infinity scarf. So I would love to uh, see your photos, as always, of your cat wearing his or her scarf. So please send those along to either catventurous.community at gmail.com or you can tag us on social media catventurous.crochet that's on Instagram and Facebook and I'll put down in the description box below all of the ways that you can you can make contact with us and we'd love to hear from you I'd certainly love to hear from you Melba will be a bit more indifferent to that but <laughs> I would certainly love to hear from you and see your photos so if you have time please please make contact. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this tutorial and take care. See you. Bye. Really? Oh yeah. Oh really baby. <laughs>